Today we're going to cover the basic features and functions of Commander. Starting with the home screen, this is the first screen you'll see when you log in. And what you'll see at the very top left is your licensing information. This will be who the software is licensed for, your system ID, your care plan, and you'll also see below any modules that you've currently got active within the system. There's some useful charts here as well. For example, the bar charts below. This is for events per day, and we'll show you the number of events that have gone through the system every day. The pie charts you can also see on here will show you the number of users, for example, and how many more users you can put into the system with your current license. If you scroll down slightly, you will see that you can also check out your hardware and see what hardware you've currently got and their firmware versions. If you need some more detail on this, you can download the footprint using the download footprint button. This can be uploaded to our dashboard. If you do need to change the language, the option to change the language is at the bottom left hand corner. If you look at the bottom right, you'll see a green box. If it is any other color, it means that you may need to just check to see if you have any cabinets or equipment in an error state just by giving it a click. The option to log out is also at the bottom right corner. To navigate to the user menu, we can hover over home users and select the user tab. Within here on the left hand side you'll see a list of all of your users that are currently within the system. We can open up any of these to see the users in more detail. Next to the users you'll see several icons. These icons would mean that they've got a group or assignments to key tags or doors for example. You can see the user group, the key tag, the key tag group, doors, door groups, and even a time profile if it's assigned to them. We can click any of these at any point and see what keys are currently assigned, for example, to that particular user. Below you'll also see if they have a credential assigned, it will be appearing below their name. And if you need to assign the credential, we can certainly use the credential subtab at the top. There is also a nice filter option where we can search for particular users and obviously change their account and make changes if we need to. With Charlotte, for example, we can see all of Charlotte's information here. We can also change Charlotte's access rights as an administrator for the terminal, for example. We can also enable apps for Charlotte, for example, dice to go and dice to wallet We can always revisit Charlotte's assigned credentials and the credentials subtab. And if we need to make a change to the card credential, for example, here, we can click the blue arrow and it will take us straight through to that card credential. We can also assign Charlotte into other user groups. We can even assign individual key tags. If we wish, we can group bunches of keys together and again assign them to a particular user just to make the administration quicker or even put a time profile against the user to restrict when they can and can't access the cabinet or the terminal. We can also assign access to terminals for administration purposes without having to assign the need to assign keys. We can also release key tags remotely through the software by selecting the terminal, selecting the cabinet in question and selecting the key. This will then show in the reports that an administrator released the key and released it to a particular user. If we need to add a new credential to the system, we can navigate to it by going back to the home menu, permissions and credentials. From here, it will give us a list of all of the credentials that are currently in the system. And we can go to any of these at any time. And if we need to, we can certainly make changes with them. If we need to create a new credential, we can use the new credential function in the top right corner of the sub tabs. This will then give us a blank form field to be able to fill out and input the new data. We can select the type, whether it be a card or a pin. And if you know the card number, you can certainly type it in. If you don't, you can use an RDL5, for example, to upload the card number. At any point, if the card is lost or stolen, for example, if we check any of these boxes and save it, it will disable the card from the system. We can also choose which systems it works with, whether it be PROC safe, 
door locks and text tag, for example. Once we're happy and we click Save, we can then see that the credential will appear on the left hand side. To access the reporting menu, we can hover over the home menu, go to reports, and then select reports tab. Within this, you'll see at the top left, you have several predefined reports. For example, in the proc safe list here, we can see the current key tag location and where all the keys are. We also have some time filter based reports, so we can see all events of today, for example, or even all events of this month if we chose. We even have a number of system reports we can use, for example, the user data, where it will display a list of all of the users and what they have access to, or even the key tag data, where it will give you a list of all of your keys, their details, and who's got access to them. We can also generate our own custom reports by clicking the Create Reports sub tab at the top right corner. We can give it a description. And then we can set the data range on this. For example, if we wanted to, we could choose the last 24 hours. Or if there'd been an incident, we can select a custom date range. When we click Save, the report will appear on the left hand side. If I view this report now, it's not going to show me anything. So what we do is we build some body to this and give it some information to, to show us. And we just work along the sub tabs at the top. So we start with the Users tab. If it's a particular user in question, we can certainly assign them over. If it's all the users we want to focus on, we can select all users at the bottom. We can do the same for key tags. If it's just all of the keys we want to see, we can certainly select them all. If not, we can cherry pick between the keys that are here, and if they're assigned, it will show them in the reports. We can also do this with key tag groups. So if there's a group of keys in particular you want to keep an eye on in a report, you can certainly do that. Or even doors. The last one, which is the most important, is the events. And within this, you'll see all of your events in the system, and they are separated out between the brands, as you can see, Transpeed and Proxy, for example. And we can select a couple of, a couple of here to show in the, um, in the report. For example, Issued is when the key's been taken out, and Returned is when the key's been put back. Now, when we go to view the report, if there's any information to display, it will certainly show it. There are some nice filtering options in here as well. So even after this report has been generated, we can certainly filter against this report in particular. And if we know the key name, for example, I can filter for that and it will show me just anything to do with that particular key. And at any time we can save this as a PDF or even a CSV file or even print it if we require. In the software, there's some useful background tools that you will find. The very first one being floor plans. And what we can do is we can upload a floor plan into the software. We can then use this to do several things. First one being is that we can actually track what users have been up to. So we can see Charlotte, for example, and we can see when things have been returned very quickly. We can also change the time span, and even filter against the users at the top if we need to. We can also use a function called workflows. For example, here I've got a key tag that's been overdue and I've told it that I want it to create an action. And the action is I want it to send an email when the key is overdue to be back. We can also change this to send out a notification to our app called dice to go Or even if we really wanted to, we could even send it to the alarm monitor. If we wanted to generate our own new workflow, we can create a new workflow at the top right. And we can give this a name. We can then again choose our action. And for this one, for example, I'm going to say if a battery is low in one of our in one of our doors, so I can find the door locks group. And then within here, we can find battery low. We can define it against any users in any door groups if we wish, and we can tell it that we wanted to send an email. We can then give the email, email a subject, and then we can fill the body out on there, which it will send out to the, to the group of users. We also have an administration menu in the background, 
which can be found with the gear icon always at the top right corner. Within the administration menu, there are several options. In the general options, some of the ones you can use would be to enforce a password policy against the software. We can also set an automatic logout, so it will, set, it will log out the user if they're idle for 30 minutes, for example. We can set up user-definable fields within here as well, from which we can place into the user menu. And we can also set the language of these as well. If we have a credential we wish to blacklist, we can certainly do that through here. And we can also look at our log file, which will tell us any changes that have happened within the software. We do have some other options, for example, LDAP and the email server. These can be seen on another video. And very lastly, within this administration menu, we can also create new logins for the software itself. We can also amend existing logins. And as you can see, I've got the administrator here. But if I wanted to create a new one, I could select the new admin at the top. We can give them a name. We can give them a password. And then we can set their admin level. Now, as a user, they will have very basic access. A super user is slightly elevated. and will give them the ability to delete key tags and users, for example. And an administrator will give them access to absolutely everything. Once we have saved this, it will now give us the options on what we would like for that user to particularly see. And what we can do is we can set them to view and edit only the user section. And if I save that now, if that new user logs in, they will only have the ability to see and edit the users within the software. We can also set up areas against them. And we can also assign individual terminals to them as well. So if they've got one particular terminal that you want them to manage, you can certainly say, well, let's just give them access to the carpool cabinet. We also have the option for areas in the administration menu where we can create our own new areas. And we can give it a bit more information here regarding whether if we want to have a tree-like structure for the main areas and sub-areas within the software. 